Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to call to order the meeting of the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners, and we're calling on Commissioner Schaefer to lead us in prayer, and then Commissioner Cook to lead us into the pledge to the flag. I would ask you to please, let's pause for a moment and remember our servicemen and women and also all the victims of terrorism and oppression throughout our world. And let us pray. Father God, we come before you with humble and contrite hearts in thanksgiving for the blessings you continually give us and our country. And we pray that you will remain with us and deliver our country and our world from all terrorism and evil and give us the peace that can only be found in you. We ask you to be with all who make decisions for our cities and our counties, our countries, and our planet Earth. And we ask you tonight to be especially with Roger Allen and his recovery and all, all those that are cl close to us who are ill. And we ask you to hold our servicemen and women again in the palm of your hand. For in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Schaefer? Here. Commissioner Black? Here. Commissioner Jordan? Here. Commissioner Pete? Here. Commissioner Cook? Here. Commissioner Jernigan? Here. Commissioner Farley? Here. Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner Sandlin? Here. Commissioner Turner? Here. Commissioner Allen? Here. Commissioner Stevens? Here. Commissioner Jordan? Here. Commissioner Baum? Commissioner Coggin? Present. Commissioner Young? Here. Commissioner Phillips? Present. Commissioner McAdoo? Here. Commissioner Ely? Here. Commissioner Gooch? Here. Commissioner Serenio? 21 present. Well, thank you very much. We have before you a copy of the minutes of the last meeting. Do we have a motion concerning the minutes? Commissioner Mr. Chairman, I move that Phillips. they be approved as mailed. All right, I have a motion. Do we have a second? second. Commissioner Jones? Is there any discussion, any corrections or additions? If not, all of you in favor of that, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Okay. Now we have a time for public comments and we have two people that wish to speak. And we will remind you that you have three minutes to make your statements and we'd like for you to come forward and give us your name and address and make your statement. First, we'll call on Corey Wells. Good evening. I'm Corey Wells of 2123 Londonderry Drive, Murfreesboro. I'm here tonight on behalf of Read to Succeed, which I know you're familiar with. Read to Succeed has been promoting literacy here in Rutherford County for over seven years with programs like Reading in the Schools Day, the Reading Rally, Unplug and Read, the Read to Be, and our High School Express Yourself Arts Conference and many other things, some of which you all have been involved with. I'm here tonight to tell you about this year's one book, Community Read. We're now in our fourth year of this program. Each year we join partners, Lineball Library, MTSU, and Barnes and Noble in asking adults in Rutherford County to all read the same book. This year's title is Major Pettigrew's Last Stand by Helen Simonson. It's a story that beneath a lot of uh, dry British wit and some laugh out loud moments in the life of retired English major Ernest Pettigrew also explores some more serious issues about stereotypes and about relationships across lines of culture and religion and class. 
This book has been on the New York Times bestseller list and made the top five list in fiction for 2010 from Amazon and Oprah. But we picked the book before Oprah did, I want you to know that. <laughs> Critics have described this novel as thoroughly charming and refreshing in its optimism and faith in the transformative possibilities of courtesy and kindness. And I don't think anyone here would argue that we need to see more of that in all our communities these days. Additional partners in this year's effort include the Learning Circle, First Baptist Church, and the Intercultural and Diversity Affairs Center at MTSU. Now I have a copy, as usual. Our Commissioner Ely has already read the book and recommends it highly. She said she just finished, and I've heard a rumor that Commissioner Baum might be interested in being the first reader of this copy. He will be reading that passing it along to others of you, and we do sincerely appreciate you being aware that your constituents are reading this book and in you also reading it and taking a leadership role in showing that literacy matters here in Rutherford County. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Ms. Wells. We really appreciate that. And thank Mr. Baum for stepping up and being the first to take this book on for the commission. Next, we'd like to call on Mr. Donald Todd. My name is Donald Todd, and I live at 633 Buck Lane. Financial and taxing policies under scrutiny. Let's take a look at county investments and certificates of deposit. When a CD is purchased by the county trustee for $5 million, for example, it is very difficult, if not impossible, for anyone to determine which portion and how much of that portion came specifically from the unreserved ending fund balance of one of the nine major funds in the county. In other words, to identify not only the specific fund, but also to identify the specific fiscal year from which this particular portion originated is almost impossible. What this means is the county collects more money from us than they need. The excess is pooled with other income and used to buy CDs. We must be able to track the particular portion back to its origin if our goal is to determine for what purpose any portion of, of a fund is ultimately being used, considering the fact that in some cases it is against the law to use collected money for anything other than what it is originally appropriated for in the budget. This is a cause of concern. If this is the situation in most counties, and I suspect it is, then isn't it necessary to ask why we cannot have transparency of record keeping, especially since originally the surplus revenue, unreserved ending fund balance, was appropriated for a specific purpose in the budget. We need to know if this non-transparent type of record keeping is a Metro policy. Incidentally, Metro's goal is socialism. Transparent record keeping is important if we are trying to save money in order to pay for the cost of government, especially during our economic crisis. Therefore, we need to consider how we can save money in an area which right now is the most expensive part of running our county government. This area is the county school district. What will happen as a result of the county commission appropriating more than $256 million to the county school district and then plan to spend 40 or $50 million to build new schools without any regard for our economic crisis? The result will be higher taxes, bankruptcy, or both. Our two-part solution. First, we are putting pressure on state legislators to set aside or nullify a law, TCA section 49-3-314, which would make it possible for any economically pressed county district, school, uh, for any economically pressed county school district to postpone expensive school building projects until the economy improves. Secondly, put that surplus revenue to work by rolling it over to next year's budget. Eric Cantor, or second, secondly, put that surplus revenue to work by rolling it over to next year's budget. Eric Cantor, the new Republican majority leader in the U.S. House of Representatives, made this, made this statement. To solve our financial crisis, he recommends that we, quote, pay as we go and that we cut spending as we go, unquote. Rutherford County could try this. This is an unpleasant necessity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Todd. Next, we're ready to, uh, for elections and confirmations from our steering committee.
The only thing that's in front of us uh, this month is the notaries, and I think the list is in front of you, and then I approve that, I, I move that they be approved according to that list. Second, Commissioner Salmon, any discussion on that? All of you in favor of that, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, while I have the floor, I'd just like to remind everyone to go online, if you would, and fill out your disclosure of interest uh, with the Tennessee Ethics Commission before the end of the month. If you've uh, uh, forgotten to do that, you still have a couple of weeks to do that. Yes, thank you very much for that's a timely reminder. There's no unfinished business. Let's see now, Mrs. Ely, we have time for you to begin your, re Let's, I have one more piece before we start the budget finance committee. Um, we do have a purchasing committee monthly report that you've received and we need to approve that before we uh, go into the budget and then come back to public hearings. Commissioner Cook, do we have a second? And that was Commissioner Schaefer, I believe. Any questions concerning that report? All of you in favor of that, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. So Ms. Ely, you may begin with the Budget Finance and Investment Committee report. Item J2A, general fund budget amendments. Uh, we have uh, from the Sheriff's Department and then longevity pay and related benefits. Be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the general fund be amended as follows. Sheriff's Department and jail increased revenue from sale of recycled materials, $311. Increased expenditures, law enforcement equipment, $311. Increased revenue from a law enforcement grant, $16,500. Increased expenditures for law enforcement equipment, $16,500. This is to recognize partial uh, amount of a 2010 burn justice assistant grant. The grant amount is $46,525. Uh, but we are only uh, budgeting a partial amount and we will see a budget amendment for the remainder at a later time. Increased revenue, other direct revenue, excuse me, other direct federal revenue, $16,127. Increased expenditures to jail, maintenance and repair of buildings, uh, $16,127. This is a SCAAP grant, that is Sheriff Criminal Alien Assistance Program grant, and this does meet the guidelines of the grant to use it for the maintenance and repair of buildings. Longevity pay and related benefits from the county clerk, uh, longevity pay of $50 and related benefits, register of deeds, longevity pay, $50 and related benefits, jail, longevity pay, $25 and related benefits, sheriff's department, longevity pay, $25 and related benefits. And of course, this is a bookkeeping uh, uh, procedure to show uh, where uh, the money was actually spent. Resolved this 13th day of January, 2011. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second, Commissioner uh, Jordan, I believe and Mr. Sandlin, but in any event, uh, any discussion? All right, please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item J to B, a solid waste sanitation fund budget amendment uh, from the landfill and then also longevity pay and related benefits. Be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the solid waste sanitation fund be amended as follows. Landfill operations and maintenance from assigned for public health and welfare, $7,000 to communications. Last fiscal year, the solid waste department received $75,396 from the federal government uh, for tornado damage. Uh, this fund uh, went to fund balance at the end of the fiscal year, June 30th. Uh, this request utilizes $7,000 of that money because it is an expense of the tornado. Longevity pay and related benefits from convenience center, 
uh, longevity pay of $175 and the related benefits to litter grant $175 and related benefits. Resolve this 13th day of January uh, 2011. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second, Commissioner Black. Any discussion? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item J2C, a resolution authorizing acceptance of assistance to firefighters grant originally applied for by the Rutherford Volunteer Fire Department. Whereas the Rutherford Volunteer Fire Department has applied for an assistance to firefighters grant, which is a federal grant providing funding of 95% and requiring a local match of 5%. And whereas the Rutherford Volunteer Fire Department has merged with the Rutherford County Fire and Rescue Department, and upon approval by the federal agency, the grant will be transferred to Rutherford County. And whereas the amount of the grant award is $52,318, with the local match being $2,615. And whereas the proceeds of the assistance to firefighters grant will provide funding for 16 sets of turnout gear and rapid intervention team equipment to rescue a trapped firefighter. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the county mayor and any other appropriate officials of Rutherford County, Tennessee, be and are hereby authorized to execute all necessary documents to accept the assistance to firefighters grant in the amount of $52,318, requiring matching funds of $2,615, subject to the grant being awarded to Rutherford County, Tennessee. Resolved this 13th day of January 2011. I move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second from Commissioner P. Any discussion or questions? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item J2D, a resolution authorizing additional funding for the construction of a fire station for Fosterville Volunteer Fire Department. Whereas during the 2010-2011 budget process, Rutherford County appropriated $55,000 from the development tax toward the construction of a one-bay unmanned fire station for the Fosterville Volunteer Fire Department to be located on Midland Fosterville Road. And whereas the Fosterville Volunteer Fire Department desires to construct a more permanent two-bay structure with the potential for an office, restrooms, and occupied space for an approximate cost of $147,900. Whereas the Fosterville Volunteer Fire Department plans to contribute $20,000 toward the construction of the fire station with an additional $75,000 needed to complete the construction. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that an additional $75,000 be appropriated from the development tax, providing total funding from Rutherford County of $130,000 with the Fosterville Volunteer Fire Department contributing $20,000 for the construction of a second fire station for the Fosterville Volunteer Fire Department to be located on Midland Fosterville Road and that the general fund be amended as follows to provide a transfer to fund 171 General Capital Projects Fund. Transfers out from restricted for capital projects, $75,000, to transfer to other funds, $75,000. Resolved this 13th day of January, 2011. I move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Seconded by Commissioner Jones. Any questions or discussion? Please cast your votes. 
anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item J2E, a resolution authorizing execution of a grant contract with the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency related to the May 2010 flood. Whereas Rutherford County incurred considerable cost responding to the May 2010 flood. And whereas Rutherford County has been notified of a public assistance grant award from the state of Tennessee, Tennessee Emergency Management Agency for the cost incurred in the amount of $65,386.10. And whereas the grant amount represents a partial amount to be paid to Rutherford County with the remainder to be paid in incremental payments. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the county mayor and all appropriate officials of Rutherford County be and are hereby authorized to execute the grant contract with the state of Tennessee, Tennessee Emergency Management Agency for a public assistance grant in the amount of $65,386.10. A copy of the same being attached here to is Exhibit 1 and incorporated herein by reference as if set forth herein at length verbatim for the provision of public assistance pursuant to the Presidential Disaster Declaration for severe storms, flooding, straight line winds, and tornadoes during May 2010. Additionally, that the county mayor be further authorized to accept any further amendments that might be received relative to the May 2010 flood as the grant process continues. Resolved this 13th day of January 2011. I move for approval. Second, Second Commissioner Schaefer. Any discussion? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item J2F, a resolution authorizing the extension of a contract with Appertain South Central Tennessee Development District and a related budget amendment. Whereas Rutherford County desires to enter into a service contract, excuse me, a service agreement with Appertain Corporation, South Central Tennessee Development District for removal and disposal services for all dead livestock within the county for a second term of six months, commencing on January 1, 2011, at a cost of $15,380. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the county mayor be authorized to execute a service agreement with Appertain Corporation, South Central Tennessee Development District. A copy of the same being attached here to is Exhibit 1 and incorporated herein by reference as if set forth herein at length verbatim. For removal and disposal services of all dead livestock within the county for a second term of six months commencing on January 1, 2011. Additionally, that the general fund be amended as follows to provide funding for the contract. Sanitation and waste removal from unassigned fund balance, $10,135 to contracts with private agencies, $10,135. And I would alert the uh, budget committee this amount has been revised uh, in budget. We approved $10,000, uh, but this needed to, to uh, meet the agreement. Resolved this 13th day of January 2011. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second. Commissioner Jordan, any question or discussion? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item J2G, a resolution authorizing a contract with Huddleston Steel Engineering Incorporated for a feasibility study of Epps Mill Road. Whereas in an effort to improve Epps Mill Road and determine the projected cost of said improvements, 
a feasibility study is needed. Whereas Rutherford County desires to accept a proposal from Huddleston Steel Engineering Incorporated at a cost of $4,900 for a feasibility study report that examines Epps Mill Road from the Tennessee Department of Transportation right of way at Interstate 24 west to Plainview Road, utilizing GIS mapping, aerial photography, and plats and plans to provide a preferred conceptual layout in plan view and a recommended cross section for Epps Mill Road. Whereas the feasibility study will consider any known construction constraints and environmental, ecological, or historical concerns in developing the preferred layout, providing a planning based cost projection for construction of the project. Whereas Huddleston Steel will attend meetings with county, city, and or state officials as necessary and will provide the resulting conceptual plan, cross section, and a summary report in a hard copy and digital format. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the county mayor be authorized to accept the proposal from Huddleston Steel Engineering Incorporated. A copy of the same being attached here to is Exhibit 1 and incorporated herein by reference as if set forth herein at length verbatim to provide a feasibility study report of Epps Mill Road at a cost of $4,900. Resolved this 13th day of January 2011. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second, Commissioner Jernigan. Any discussion or questions? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Thank you very much. Okay, that was very timely then, Commissioner Ely, and it's almost 6.30, so with that being said, uh, we will, uh, start the public hearings and we do have two public hearings tonight and the first one is the applicant is monty turner rezoning and conditional use permit located on epps mill road the existing zoning is r15 the requested zoning is services and the requested uh, conditional use permit is for a general store on approximately 1.38 acres and mr demosi you may uh, give us your report and information. Thank you, Mayor Burgess, and good evening, Mayor and County Commissioners. Uh, this first application, as uh, Mayor Burgess stated, is located along Epps Mill Road. Uh, the applicant's proposing to subdivide a 1.3-acre tract from an existing 89-acre tract. The concept plan, which you uh, have uh, copies of this and the next application before you, does show a 9,360-square-foot 9, uh, Dollar General store with 32 parking spaces. Uh, this project will utilize uh, the sanitary sewer from the city of Murfreesboro that runs along the south side of Epps Mill Road. Since it's connecting to the sewer, the project will have to meet Murfreesboro design standards and require approval from their planning commission as well as any standards that the county may have. Uh, this area was uh, zoned uh, roughly back in 1971, about 170 acres around the Buchanan exit was rezoned to commercial. In 1985, we saw an additional 47 acres across the street from this property that's in question tonight uh, rezoned to industrial. Uh, most recently, in June of last year, a travel plaza, which uh, also con contained a convenience market and restaurant, uh, was also approved at the corner of Capitol Way and Epps Mill Road. Uh, the surrounding area does have property that's zoned industrial, commercial, retail, wholesale trade, transportation, and R15, so you can see that there is a, quite a, a variety of zoning in that area. Uh, this area is classified as what's called an interstate mixed use node in the Christiana Buchanan land use study. Also in the uh, comprehensive plan for Rutherford County that's uh, in draft format at this time uh, does identify this area as what's called an employment node which does encourage these type uses. Uh, the Planning Commission did uh, have some discussion on this matter and ultimately did vote to approve, recommend approval to you by a vote of 10 for and zero against. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right, do we have any questions of Mr. DeMosi before we have the public hearing? Okay, then thank you, sir. 
Now, that being said, we will declare the public hearing open for the request by Mr. Turner with respect to this rezoning for a general store. So if there's anyone in the audience that wishes to speak for or against this proposed project, now is your opportunity to come forward and, and speak and give us your name and address and please make your comments. Is there anyone that wishes to speak? Yes, sir, please come forward and give us your name and address and make your comments regarding this application. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. I'm Monty Turner with Turner & Associates Realty out of Nashville, Tennessee, uh, the developer for the proposed project on Epps Mill. And uh, Steve Steele with Huddleston Steele is here with me. He can answer any specific engineering questions, uh, but I'd be happy to, uh, to field any general questions you might have about the, the project. Uh, Commissioner P. Some of the Dollar General stores do sell beer now, yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner P. asked, did they sell alcohol? That was the question. Any other questions while Mr. P., uh, Mr. Turner is before us? Mr. Schaefer? Uh, yes, sir. A, a lot of the Dollar Generals have build-outs uh, along with them, and a lot are just the store itself. Is this just the uh, Dollar General store and yep. nothing else? Yes, sir, just a freestanding Dollar General. No shops attached. Any other questions? All right, then. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Is there anyone else Thank that you. wishes to speak have, for um, or Mr. against? I have Excuse one question. me. I'm sorry, Ms. Allen. I did not recognize you. Excuse me. Commissioner Allen. Did you all evaluate whether or not you um, felt there was a need for a turn lane here? I know this is a narrow road. There's been some discussion about that. Uh, yes, ma'am. Based on the traffic counts and the, the trips, per day that this store generates, which is about 250 to 300 on average, or roughly 25 to 30 cars per business hour. Uh, we, we don't feel that the turn lane is, is warranted at this time. All right, thank you. Anyone else? All right, so the public hearing is still open. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak regarding this project, either for or against it. If there is no other uh, person wishing to speak, the public hearing is closed and we are ready to see if we have a motion regarding this project. Commissioner Jernigan. First, I'd like to make a memo to this, that we add a turn lane and if you'll look right here on your maps, all the commissioners, that you'll see where this is. This road right here is 17 and a half foot wide with shoulders deep as these deaths right here. And if you look right across this road, when they put, uh, with the repair campers and all, they had them to put a turn lane in all the way down through there to where they turn in. If you look at the feet right there, uh, to where they're going to be going in from where this interchange comes off. Uh, it probably ain't 100 foot, so down to the left, you got a subdivision down here, several hundred homes, and they've been several wrecks up and down through here, two fatalities on here. And my concern is if these residents is coming out of here and people wants to be coming in, this Dollar General store going to turn left here, you possibly could be backed up from that interchange where they can't even get off to get over here to these businesses. So I'm going to make a amendment that they put a turn lane right here in front of their business. I ain't talking about uh, no more than uh, the other business across there. And all I'm requiring is right there in front of their business. I ain't requiring nothing elaborate, but I'm going to make a amendment we put a turn lane in before I move to proof. All right, so your motion, Mr. Jernigan, is to approve the project with the addition of uh, the requirement for a turn lane. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Do we have a second to the motion? No, Excuse me. Uh, let's get a point of clarification in, Mr. Jernigan. Well, he said he was going to make a motion to amend it before he made a motion to uh, approve it. Oh. And so I was thinking we could tackle the turn lane and then vote for the 
Dollar General itself, but I, that's just what he said and the way I interpreted it. Okay, but that is that correct, Mr. That'd Attorney? That'd be fine. I just want to make sure when you're voting on this, and we if we do don't put this turn lane in, you have accidents here and people knowing it could be come back on the county too. Uh, okay, let me let me sort of think here, man. I'm a little bit. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there, there's not a motion on the floor. He just needs to make a motion to approve and then amend it. But with him making the motion, he's what I'm thinking he said is a motion to approve with an turn lane. That's the way he's stating it. So that's the way it's going to have to be if we've got a second towards that. Because there's not a motion on the floor right now to approve. Can't amend that and it's not now, on the floor. Point, point well taken. There's no motion on the floor to amend at this moment in time without putting the motion to approve on the floor with the with the condition that the turn lane is included in their approval process. But just a moment here. Is that okay with your motion, Mr. Jernigan? That wasn't my intention to put your it like that, but when you said that we need to get the motion here together, that's the reason I said okay. So it well, don't you, really matter to me, because if, if it don't do you want to make lane, the, I don't care whether the building or not. Do you want to make the motion to approve the project with the condition that the turn lane's That'll added? Be or fine. You just, That'll be fine. And Mr. Jo Jordan, did, did you okay? Now, Commissioner Jordan, uh, we have to have a motion on it before we can make any amendment or even discuss approving I, or disapproving. Well, I'm not, I don't, I want to support the Commissioner of District as much as I can. Uh, I, I know we had some numbers now presented us at planning about the uh, turn lane and, and the only thing that bothers me is we need to be consistent we need to be able to use our numbers and do it repetitively and uh, and so i'd like to ask to suspend the rules and get the county engineer up here to give us the same numbers because i'm fine with putting the turn lane here but i just want to know the next one comes down across the agenda how we're going to do it so we just need to be on the same page every time so i make a motion to suspend the rules and get dale corbett to come tell this body exactly what he told planning about the feasibility of a turn line. Second from Commissioner McAdoo and others. Uh, all right, all of you in favor of suspending the rules and letting Mr. Uh, Corbett address this and give his numbers that traffic count wise, say, please say aye. aye. Are any opposed? Okay, please come forward Mr. Corbett and give your uh, information regarding your findings. As the uh, commissioner said, there's been in the past a lot of discussion on turn lane, and so in the past we used uh, TDOT's numbers, which sometimes are outdated. We recently purchased some traffic counters in which we put out in front of this, this site. It's the first time we've used these. Our attempt here is to try to uh, put in front of you just numbers. Now, there are different reasons to put in turn lanes. It's going to be safety and their sight distance and all this kind of stuff. All I'm doing right now is just telling you the numbers we got when we put out these traffic out. We put them out and we kept them out a week before, it was a week before the planning commission meeting. We finished doing it actually the day of the planning commission. The peak time in the morning is between 7.30 and 8. There's 100 trips per hour coming out of the sub, or coming from the subdivision toward the interstate. The Dollar General normally doesn't open until 8 o'clock, so that's probably, it wouldn't be a problem anyway, you turn it right into there. In the evening, the peak time runs between 5 and six, there's approximately 185 trips per hour as um, offered by the gentleman back there. They expect to generate around 250, maybe 300 trips a day for about 10 hour business days. So you can average about uh, 25 to that. What makes a little over 10, uh, 200 trips per hour. Based on the uh, TDOT charts that they have with a speed limit of 40 miles per hour, which is that road, you need approximately 490 vehicles an hour to warrant a turn lane. Uh, the approaching traffic toward you at that time is about 85 trips per hour. So just looking straight at the numbers, the, the traffic lane is not warranted in there. Yes, Mr. Corbin, I, I agree with you. I, I want to help the commissioner out over there too, but I think some of the discussion that I've heard about it is it's not there right now, but we've approved a truck stop to go in right there. They are putting their turn lane on their property, which is gonna take hopefully most 
of that situation for the truck stop, but it is going to increase the traffic flow. And so, to me, and the commissioner can speak for himself, but that's the concern with the residents out there and the commissioner, what he's saying is once that's developed, which we've already approved it through planning, so it's coming. So it, does your numbers include the truck stop numbers that are going to be coming in and out there? They do not because that turn lane turns into Capitol Way, which is before you get to Dollar General. In other words, the traffic that would exit the interstate or come toward that tr tr truck stop would turn off. It would not actually pass Dollar General or create a problem coming into there. That's the next piece of property to the left as soon as you... Yeah, the actual property line is almost... In, it's right in, in the front corner, of Capital Way, right, right, and it goes down toward the the uh, creek as you go toward the uh, subdivision. Uh, Commissioner P. Having driven fire engines on Elps Mill, and the uh, trees that overhang that a little bit, hitting the mirrors on both sides of the truck as I'm going down that road, will let you know how narrow that is as it goes on out. Now, not exactly right there, but it's fairly narrow. But this property is a major intersection off the interstate and it's going to be developed in the future. Now we've got a business that's going in where we could require that they put this turning lane in and in the future as more people uh, have businesses added to there, we're going to eventually have to expand that road and when we do, the county taxpayers are the ones that's going to do the expanding and right now we have the opportunity to let the person that's causing the traffic pay for this. And that's why I think Commissioner Jordan, uh, Jernigan is asking for this turn lane now and why I'm supporting it. Thank you. Other, uh, Commissioner uh, Schaefer. Well, I don't know who it is that can answer this. Maybe it's Mr. Corbett, but where exactly is this turn lane going to go for Dollar General? I would assume it's in the center of the road so that coming off the interstate, uh, when they get down to Dollar General, somebody can, has a turn lane in the center so they can make the left turn. And I would think it would be starting, from what I've heard, somewhere around uh, the middle of where Capitol Way runs in Depp's Mill Road. So then, uh, well, I don't know what it is, but I would say it's, what, 125 feet or something like that. that's about how long it would be? That's, uh, that's true. The, their interests are proposed, and it's down toward the, the other end of the property, toward the creek. And that would put the uh, turn lane approximately, like you say, it would be in the middle road, about 125, 150 feet. Any other comments or questions of Mr. Corbett? Commissioner Allen. Um, Mr. Corbett, did you, your staff, have an opportunity to measure that road when you were doing the study? What I did is uh, after the uh, talk to Commissioner Jordan, the width of the road, we had, I had my guys go out and measure it. I also had them look at our GIS. And then uh, Hudson Steel has also surveyed it. The approximate width of the road throughout the length of the property is a little over 20 feet. Okay. And are you familiar with the Rutherford County subdivision regulations that define a substandard road as anything less than 18 feet? Yeah, we went through a, a lengthy discussion about that. Um, is there any way, so far from an engineering standpoint or from TDOT's formulas, is there any way for you to project or, or to include projected traffic counts? into a formula? Well, the difficulty would would be if what kind of business you're going to, you know, each business generates a different type of traffic count in through there. So any type of projection I would make without knowing exactly what's going to be there, it would be just a wild guess, basically. If we did ask them to put a turn lane in, um, would it only be for the portion of the road that's directly in front of their property? That's the normal procedure when you when you ask for a turn lane. So the amount of the turn lane would just be strictly the width of that road frontage. Okay, any other questions or discussion? Mr. Chairman, I have some additional comments, not necessarily for Dale, but when we're ready for general discussion. Well, we'll meet it. Yeah, we have other discussion that will take place, but is there anything that you need to ask Mr. Or Corbett? All right, thank you, sir. Then we'll go back to the regular discussion of this and the, uh, we have a motion on the floor to approve this with 
the conditions that we receive from planning and the additional condition that a turning lane be required in front of the business. Commissioner Farley. I guess my question is going to be to the county attorney. Um, what legally, I know with, the, with our regulations for our zoning regulations, my question is, and I, and I, and, and I too I always try to support the commissioner of the, of the district, the turn lane, we've got a, we've got a, a county engineer stating that we do not need one. And they've also, I think uh, the applicant said that uh, his engineer agreed with our county engineer. Are we doing anything or putting ourselves in any kind of situation by adding something like this? Well, uh, I think the first observation is this is the uh, TDOT calculation, which, you know, is, is a standard they've got, but doesn't necessarily preclude a county or a city from having a different standard for a turn lane. And I think if you determine that circumstances warrant it, you can attach it as a condition uh, to the approval of this particular project. Now, can somebody challenge that? Sure, anybody can challenge anything, but I think there is a legitimate basis for doing it uh, based on the information you've got, even though it doesn't meet the TDOT standard. Um, having said that, you've got a recommendation from the engineer and you've got TDOT's findings, so you just have to make your decision on what you think is the best judgment of the commission as to the use of this property in the traffic situation. Other discussion? Commissioner Stevens. I have a question about this $4,900 study that we just approved uh, to uh, study this road and its future widening. What happens if Dollar General has to put this turn lane in and then the study comes back and the road through there is not at all what Dollar General put in as the turn lane? Is that money that, that's just thrown out the window on the part of Dollar General? I don't think there's any, uh, we can't really predict what we're going to do. We're going to do this study and we may or may not ever build or improve that road, but it's some probability that it needs to be done in the next few years, but it's a ways off before we're going to get to the actual expenditure of construction funds for improving that part of the road there. Well, it seems to me like this widening of the road is something that's going to be coming up soon, and I just would hate to require this business that wants to come here and, and pay sales tax and hire people uh, to require them to widen this road, and then the road that we widen not be anything like that, and all their, their money just goes for naught. Um, I don't think that would be right to do that to them. And then also another concern that I have is there's only 30 feet of right of way down through here. And if the road's already 20 feet in width, that leaves 10 feet. Uh, if we add the turn lane in, then all the right of way is gone. Who's going to provide, uh, does Dollar General have to acquire the right of way or is the county going to get that? How does that work? Well, I don't think the county is going to acquire any more right of way there. So I, I don't know how much additional space of, of payment is actually required for the turn lane. That would be something that maybe Mr. Corbett could advise us on, but you're going to be adding an additional uh, width of payment there that enough to accommodate a vehicle. So I don't know with a 30 foot right away with 20 plus a turn lane plus ditches, I don't know how much space is required. Well, I, I just don't think it's right to require them to do this when the engineer uh, <coughs> and the TDOT study says that we don't, that we don't need it. I, you know, we want businesses to come here and, and relocate and to hire people, and if we have this chilling effect where we can subjectively add these conditions like this, uh, you know, businesses may not want to locate here. They might want to go to another county. And this one is, is strictly in the county, is my understanding, so we would get to uh, keep all the sales tax that's produced and uh, of course, they're going to pay business taxes as well, and you know, I'd hate to run them off over this turn lane. Uh, if without objection, Mr. DeMosi, I believe, wanted to address maybe the question he might have had there. Yes, uh, Commissioner Stevens, just real brief about the, the right-of-way. The, the right-of-way along Epps Mill varies, uh, especially as you get closer to the interchange. There actually is, is more than 30 feet of right-of-way there at this point, and as part of the project that the applicant is proposing, they're also planning to dedicate right-of-way on their side of the road. So the right-of-way issue, as far as that's concerned, that, that should be taken care of. Uh, Commissioner Schaefer. Well, I've got a couple of questions. I know 
that the Dollar General on 231 near Walter Hill does not have a turn lane. Uh, on uh, Highway 99 out by Rockville, I'm trying to think on that one. I don't believe there's a turn lane on that one either. And those are it's it's to be uh, installed at such time as okay. TDOT would allow it to be placed there. Okay. Well, my other question then is, Mr. Turner, representing Dollar General, was up here, and uh, I would like to hear what his thoughts are on the turn lane because I, from what I gather, it didn't come out at uh, the Planning Commission yeah. when they voted on it. He's already told us that he didn't think a turn lane was required. They had already studied that in his initial remarks. Uh -huh. Well, that much he, he told us, but okay, if you want to leave it at that. Any other questions or discussions? Commissioner Jernigan. I'm going to go back again right here. These businesses put in, he's talking about Walter Hill where they didn't put a turn line. You couldn't put one in. It's right there by the red light up there. I mean, it'd been hard, too, if it had. I mean, they could, but it's a state road, so the state's got to say so on it. But right here, I don't know how many of you have been out here, but this is one of the most dangerous roads is right here, and the traffic's on here. And Dale's talking about his count. When you open that Dollar General store, you don't think people from all this area up in here, from over at Christiana, where 269 runs in here, and everywhere's going to go into this store? They ain't going to be just the ones he's counting coming out of these subdivisions here every day. And all I'm saying, if we prove something like this on a narrow road right here and something happens, we ought to be responsible if somebody gets hurt. Okay, we've had this discussion. Does anyone else wish to speak? Commissioner Allen. Okay. Um, my concern here is more than just about this particular project. And um, I think Commissioner Jordan referenced it as well. From a planning commission standpoint, this is the first time in the history of the planning commission that we've had our own objective data to be able to determine whether or not a turn lane is needed. There's hardly a meeting that goes by that I, I can recall where we've not had some discussion about a turn lane. And it seems like the stories are always anecdotal and subjective or else we're relying on the developer's traffic count and their report. This is the first time we've ever had our own information to make what I feel is an objective decision. And so I want to know not only about this project, but also going forward, what information are we going to rely on to make these decisions? You know, over and over again, our county attorneys, you know, caution us against arbitrary and capricious decisions, and that's where my concern lies. I never want to put any resident's safety at risk. I'll be the first person to say, you know, if, if a turn lane's warranted, if the developer can pay for it, all those things sound great. But there's a bigger issue at play here, and that is, what about the next project? You know, what happens when the next one comes up? How are we going to handle it, and how are we going to be consistent and make good decisions across the board and not in isolated pockets? All right, thank you. Any other one wishing to speak? We have two more, Commissioner Sandlin and Commissioner P. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I I welcome Dollar General here, and we have, I think, a planning commission as well as a county commission have welcomed Dollar General here since they've started building uh, in the past few years uh, and really kind of uh, growing in our area especially, and I think they're all doing pretty well. Um, probably one project that we probably should have put in a, uh, a turn lane was out there at uh, Walter Hill. It's very busy out there, and, and it's probably going to be warranted here, and it's probably going to be relooked at. Um, this location here, I think the only difference in some of these other uh, locations in the county that we've approved without turn lanes is, you know, it's not right off the interstate. And, uh, you know, I hope they can go here. I think it'd be a great service uh, and be an asset to the community out there. But we've got to look out after them as far as traffic is concerned, and that's what we're looking at here tonight. I think with the numbers of the uh, uh, truck stop coming in there, it, it really does a spin on the numbers, on uh, traffic flow. And like I said, we, uh, I think uh, the commissioner mentioned down here, we're getting ready to do a study that we just approved a while ago on Epps Mill Road. And uh, this is be the perfect starting place right here for the turn lane for a commercial business. They will strive here. They will do a good job here and will serve the community well. So uh, I'm gonna have to be with the commissioner on this one and, and approve for the, uh, the turn lane. 
And right now, just to clarify the motion, the motion is to approve with a turn lane, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner P. Commissioner Sandling covered what I was going to say. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay. Seeing none of you wish to speak again, we're going to uh, have a roll call vote on this. Please cast your votes. Oh, excuse me. When we started this discussion, the public hearing was still open. It's still not been closed. So, well, I meant to close it. I thought I closed it, but uh, if I didn't, it was certainly uh, should have been closed before the discussion. Public hearing is officially closed, and if I didn't say that earlier. All right, please cast your votes. Oh, anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 16 yes, 5 no, motion passes. Okay, we have one more request. From the same applicant, Mr. Monty Turner, uh, conditional use permit on Coleman Road, the existing zoning is R15, and then again they're requesting a conditional use permit for a general store on about 2.65 acres. Mr. DeMosi. Yes, Mayor Burgess, thank you. Uh, again, this, this is a piece of property uh, located along John Bragg Highway at the Coleman Road. I won't go into a whole lot of the details with this because it's pretty much identical to the last application. Uh, it's for another Dollar General store. Uh, this property is a little bit larger than the one we just looked at uh, for the primary reason that uh, they will be using a, a septic system as opposed to a sanitary sewer from the city of Murfreesboro. Uh, this uh, particular property, again, is located on John Brack Highway. Uh, the area that, uh, that's been identified is actually, if you look at our proposed comprehensive plan, for this. The area is actually at the very edge of one of the rural uh, nodes, commercial nodes. So in that regard, we do feel it is consistent with that. Uh, again, I'm not going to, unless you just have specific questions about this, uh, I'm not going to go into much more detail because it's pretty much identical. The, the size of the store is the same. It's going to be another standalone uh, unit as opposed to uh, one that had a, uh, uh, a tenant space with it. So uh, with that, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. The Planning Commission did recommend approval of this unanimously as well. Okay. Uh, Commissioner uh, Jones. Mr. DeMossi, I had uh, someone to contact me about flooding on this property. Has that been looked into? There were, there were some concerns about the flooding going over the road onto their property. Yeah, the, someone actually was at the uh, Planning Commission meeting and brought those concerns up. Um, I would defer to, to Mr. Corbett since he's here to talk a little bit more into that as he's more familiar with the drainage than, than myself. But, uh, but that, that was brought up at the Planning Commission and we're aware of the, of the potential issues that exist. Uh, if this is approved, I will say uh, that uh, any uh, site plan that's brought to our office, we look at the drainage to make sure it's not going to be causing any more water to be going on adjacent properties that may have already been going there, and in some cases it even improves the situation. So. Okay, so while Mr. DeMosi is up, does other, do others of you have any questions of him? Commissioner P. Of course, one of the concerns I had when I first saw this was the drainage because there is a drainage problem there. When John Bragg was built, it basically dammed the large fields that the water went across as a sheet. Since then, there's a small dam or rather bridge there that kind of funnels it through. So that, uh, I'll take you at your word that that will be addressed. The other question I had was on the signage, and that being uh, Scenic Highway. I noticed that you've got a ground-mounted sign there. Uh, explain your reasoning on having the sign on a scenic highway that doesn't allow signs. Well, any signage, of course, that they're uh, approving. Now, what you're looking at right there is a concept plan. Uh, of course, approval of zoning and a concept plan does not approve the signage that's on that plan. Uh, anything that's looked at at a site plan level, even at the site plan stage, uh, signage has its own um, uh, guidelines and everything that it goes by as far as approval is concerned and we will look at the guidelines for the Tennessee Scenic Highway to ensure that they're not violating anything for that from a signage standpoint. Appro if this is approved today, you're not approving signage. That's something we'll look at at staff level to make sure that they're not gonna be violating anything. And we're aware that that is on a, a, a scenic highway. So. 
the rule, I mean, and I'll, I'll just say the rules for scenic highways as far as signage go escape me just at, at, at this, this time. I don't have them right in front of me, but I know that they do exist. So, and we're not going to let them do something that would, uh, would violate that. So. Personally, I prefer not to see signage there other than, you know, on their building. I, I'd say mm -hmm. they'd have the right to, you know, put a signage there. But anyway, if y'all take that in consideration, if this passes to look at that. Place. Yes, and what we'll do is, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll look at the guidelines and compare them to our signed regulations of what they're allowed and not allowed. And we'll work with the applicant as far as, again, what they're allowed. And I can give you a report on that. Cause, so. Other questions of Mr. DeMosi? Okay, thank you then. Okay, so we're going to declare the public hearing open with respect to this application for the Dollar General store on uh, Coleman Road. Again, anyone that wishes to speak for or against this project may come forward and make your comments, give us your name and address. Anyone wish to speak regarding this? Mr. Turner. Again, Chairman, Commissioners, Monty Turner, Turner and Associates Realty in Nashville. Fortunately, I don't think this one involves any turn lane questions. Um, there, there is a median on Highway 70 uh, for cars traveling east and west uh, to turn onto Coleman Road. Um, again, it'll be a freestanding facility and similar to, um, similar to the Epps Mill project same standard traffic counts that will generate per day roughly 250 to 300 per day uh, you know around 25 per hour so um, with that i'll be glad to answer any questions you might have any additional questions of mr turner while he's before us okay thank you sir thank you is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak regarding this project Yes, sir, we do have another. So come forward, please, and give us your name and address and make your comments. Yes, my name is Byron Barnes. I live at 220 Craner Road, and uh, I live maybe less than a half a mile where the proposed site is. Uh, just some questions about safety. The roads there do not have shoulders. I also know that uh, I recently moved there about four years ago, and then some, I live right there on the corner, so it's high traffic right there in that corner. And I'm concerned that when children and everybody else that are visible with all that traffic coming through, uh, how does that play as um, far as uh, me not having to worry about all these different cars coming through there. The subdivisions that are being developed in that area, that's increasing also. I'm just uh, worried about uh, traffic flow. I also know that uh, if you have big equipment, tractor trailers and whatever is making deliveries, how does that play on that road that is so narrow with no shoulders? And uh, also, I think some other things have been addressed as far as the flooding and everything, but I'd like to see that situation a little bit better than it is. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Okay, please come forward. My name is Edmund Luther. I live at 444 Coleman Road, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I'm approximately 600 foot from Mr. Robinson's property, which a Dollar General store is going to be built. My concern is the traffic on John Bragg. It's 65 mile an hour speed zone from Rutherford all the way to Cannon County Line. If you go east on John Bragg Highway, there are no turning lanes to the right. There's a few turning lanes that go to the roads to making the left-hand turn, and those turning lanes are approximately, the length of them are three-car length. And I also have a concern on the Old Woodbury Highway. This road is going to come out. It's a short distance in between Old Woodbury Highway and John Bragg. 
if you come out on on to Old Woodbury Highway, you have Craner Road, and Craner drops off three foot onto the roadway off of Old Woodbury, and you're in that creek bed. And that creek floods quite a bit, at least two or three times a year. The photos I gave the commission, the planning commission, they were taken on November the 30th. You could see the water on Mr. Robinson's property crossing the roadway into that creek bed. I wish y'all would think about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak for or against the project? Please come forward. My name is Ronnie Taylor. I live at 4401 Woodbury Highway, and my concern is with the John Braggs part of it is that it was supposed to be a scenic route or a signage. And if they open this up, that's, they're using Coleman Road as access to John Bragg. <coughs> and also, if, if they build this, it's gonna open John Bragg up for more businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Other speakers, anyone else wish to speak? Yes, sir, please come forward. Jerry Robinson, I'm owner of the property that, uh, that's in question. Born and raised there. I've been, uh, 1943, the house was built. It's still standing, hand washed away. We do have a water problem on my lower end down there. It doesn't come across up there at Bragg Highway. Brother Luther is well protected up on the other side of on, uh, Coleman Road. He's to the south side, pond in front of him and a branch behind him, but the water won't bother him one bit. My son lives right down there where Brother Barnes lives. That water doesn't get up in his yard. It, uh, it, get, it has got over, once you cross under the bridge now, we're talking about on the bridge at the old highway. Trailer trucks went down Craner Road well before this was mentioned with that nursery back there. Nobody said nothing. I sat there and watched them turn, knock the stop signs over and everything else down there. But the trailer truck would back up and come out and back up and coming out. This uh, General Dollar has no business going down that way. That doesn't pertain to them one whatsoever. And anybody, I drove a trailer truck before, and if you're a routing man and can't put you on a four lane, something's wrong with him. That's a guy I'd go back and get a hold of. I've been caught both ways with them. Anybody with any common sense on coming out there from, uh, it don't know different kind of wood barrier coming out of Nashville, I don't know where the supplies come from. You've got a turning lane right there into Coleman Road toward the old highway, and I understand that's where the, the store's gonna be facing. You've got about 180 foot down there, and if a fella can't hit that, then he needs to go back to something else. I'm sure you've seen the stores they built. I've seen uh, the driveways they put in. Uh, I don't see no problem at all with the water moving at all. I, I, this, this is, this store is on this side of the supposedly dry creek or what once was the old road. My dad gave them permission to come up on us to put that road in and get it out of that water. And it comes through there whenever you have high water. It gets in there, a car ain't gonna drive and it didn't then. But, uh, I've watched that from my child always since 1943. But I don't see where the dollar store is going to affect that traffic going out there, and they have no reason to turn toward where Brother Luther lives. That's back up going the other way. The turn lanes over here where they want to come into off Bragg Highway, already there, to go into Coleman Road to the store. It has no business on the other side of the old highway at all. This is in between the old highway and in between Bragg Highway, and that's where your store sits. So I'm not saying a trailer truck won't get stuck out there on that two-lane road, but that happens all the time anyhow. They travel down there for what reason. They may be delivering stuff, picking up stuff. I don't know. But General Dollar, I would assume, would be coming off the four-lane. Not to say a driver wouldn't get lost, 
not to say any dig Mr. Wreck, but you can go right down there and cut across the old highway, go back around, come up Mount Herman Road, and come right back down the four lane to that property. Uh, I don't know. I look at it like this. You got jobs coming in, tax for the county. I don't see any safety problems out there whatsoever. Uh, Mr. Steele, my Huddleston engineer, is dressed a, a way to improve the flow, uh, not the flow of the water, but the flood of coming over, the water coming over on them. But it don't get over on that side, the high side toward Bragg. That's got enough elevation to protect it. Gets down on me, it does get in my yard. It runs off quick, gets on another bridge and goes on. That's got six openings out there. And across and under there, once it gets through, it moves right on. Mr. Mose Boyd, which a uh, weatherly fellow lives there now, that house was built four hours, never had water get in his yard, and it comes through there. It's got a very little banking, and it just moves it. But if you impede the flow, that's another story, but that store won't impede the flow one bit. I mean, it just, it's on the opposite side of the water run. Uh, that's the only thing. I don't, I don't see the problem myself. Just, it's, it's not in the waterway. I mean, it's. It, <laughs> but I, I say that's that, that's been about 68 years of testimony right there. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishes to speak? <clears throat> okay. There's no one else wish to speak. The uh, public hearing is closed. And do we have a motion concerning uh, this particular project, Commissioner P? I've looked at this, I've had some friends that have talked to me about it and uh, some of the people that have spoke tonight. And one thing that I told them is, you know, if they came to me and wanted to start a business somewhere in the county that's gonna help us uh, put tax dollars, you know, into the county coffers and of course this will and it's gonna provide jobs. And that's basically what I'm having to look at here. But my motion is gonna be to approve with all the conditions and I also want to add two conditions. One is there will be no alcohol sales now or in the future and two any deliveries made large trucks should be routed off John Bragg Highway. We have a motion to approve with conditions from planning in addition to those that no alcohol now or in the future be allowed to be sold there and any deliveries should be routed from John Bragg Highway. Is that correct sir? Do we have a motion, a second to that motion, please? Okay. Commissioner Jernigan. Now, discussion. Commissioner Cook. Will this building be built up a little bit where they're talking about all this water? Will it need to be built up? And what in the future with other companies coming in or businesses coming in, is it going to throw the water in a different route that it would cause some flooding? Well, again, I believe we've been reminded that uh, a site plan will have to be approved that addresses just those very issues that you uh, described there, Commissioner Cook. And uh, I don't know, we don't have the site plan yet. Is that correct, Mr. Corbett or Mr. Nemosi? We'll let Mr. DeMosi address that. Actually, the site plans were submitted for the uh, next planning commission meeting. Uh, this, uh, this site is identified as being in the 100-year flood plain, so those are things that we'll take into consideration uh, as far as, like you said, the flooding and making sure that you know, the tension is provided and everything. Those are things that we'll look at and our engineering staff will look at very closely to make sure, again, that no more water is going off-site than what is, it was uh, prior to that. Uh, and Mr. Corbett, I know I can speak more to this, but I'll at least say that the, the, the standards for stormwater have been changing fairly rapidly over the last few years and probably going to continue to do so, uh, making it even more and more stringent upon the developers to take care of the water, not just the amount, but also the quality of the water leaving the site. So. With our flooding last spring, I'm really apprehensive when I see things that could get flooded. And I do want them to come on in because I look forward to the sales tax coming in that they will be bringing in and the business tax. Uh, I think it's an asset to the community. So appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions uh, or discussion here? We do have a motion and a second. And we remind you that it's to be approved with conditions from planning with the further conditions that no alcohol or to be sold in the store now or in the future and that any delivery should be made 
from the John Bragg Highway Commissioner Phillips. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not in disagreement with, with the motion, but I do have a concern about restricting the sale of alcohol. There's, I think, a convenient market. I don't know how far it is from that, from this spot down there that does sell, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, does sell beer. Uh, is this something that that we can get into as to deciding who can and who can't sell uh, alcoholic beverages or beer? Is this something that we can do in this process? I've, I've got a little bit of a concern about that. That's a good question. We haven't asked, answered that one. <laughs> yeah. um, I have not researched that, so I cannot give you a definitive answer, but I would be concerned that given you have a beer board that is designed and legally established to determine legalities in terms of selling alcoholic beverages, particularly in this case beer, uh, I would venture that we probably do not have jurisdiction to say whether alcoholic beverages could be sold because there's another branch of government, so to speak, that would regulate that. Uh, so I would be concerned about that. But having said that, I have not researched that, Commissioner, and I would have to come back and research that and advise you uh, at a more appropriate fashion once that question was presented. Uh, Commissioner Stevens and then Commissioner Pete. I make a motion that we amend the motion on the floor to strip out the alcohol provision just because we're not sure of this right now. All right, a motion, Mr. Stevens, to remove the um, portion that uh, did not allow for the sale of alcohol, seconded by Commissioner Allen. Now, Commissioner, uh, we do have a motion. So we're on that amendment, Commissioner uh, P. Well, without that amendment in there, this does not have my support. I'll withdraw my original motion if this is passed. Well, first, we will have to deal with this amendment. We'll have to vote on that. And if that does pass, then I guess he can withdraw at that point, is it? But we'll have to deal with the motion on the amendment first. One other thing I want to mention, this is my district. This is not your district. Uh, you also are not aware of the people and their feelings about these kind of things out there. You're also not aware that shortly up the road there, there are uh, two churches. Okay, we're first voting on the amendment. Any other discussion on this amendment? The amendment has been to remove from the initial motion the restriction on the sale of alcohol. Is that clear? All right, please cast your votes on the amendment. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote. 12 yes, 9 no, motion passes. All right, therefore now, Commissioner P. I withdraw my motion. You have withdrawn your motion, is that? I'll make a new motion, a uh, motion to. Thing. I gotta get the second, the person that made that second to withdraw, I believe, and that's Mr. Jernigan, so now we're, Floor is open for a motion then, Commissioner P. Motion to deny. Do we have a second? We have no second. Motion has failed for lack of a second. There is anyone else wishes to put a motion forward? Uh, Commissioner uh, Stevens and then Commissioner Phillips. Motion to approve as the Planning Commission recommended. Do we have a second? Second, Commissioner Phillips, discussion. No discussion, I assume you're ready to vote. Commissioner Sandlin. Well, just one, <clears throat> one clarification. I very seldom go against a county commissioner that's in, in his district, and I respectfully uh, say that, Commissioner. Um, they're not planning on selling alcohol in there anyway. And I think we can get a ruling back on this right here, and we can proceed with the, the store as it is right now. It's a good plan, it's a good location, it's a good design, and uh, I, instead of just killing it right here, I mean, they're not planning on selling beer anyway. So I'm planning on voting for it, and I hope we get a, uh, an opinion back on that. And then uh, uh, when it comes back around, we all have an opportunity, as well as you, uh, in the beer board situation uh, to ask for denial or, or bring the, your community out there. You know, and I agree with you. I'm just saying right now they're not selling beer at any of them as far as I know at any of the Dollar Generals. Okay, we do have a motion to second to approve with the conditions that were 
brought forth by the Planning Commission. Any other discussion? All right, please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 20 yes, one no, motion passes. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, Commissioner, uh, Mr. DeMosi wants wishes to make an announcement. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Uh, just uh, real quick, uh, you all uh, were probably aware that uh, we were going to, we had planned to have a, a public hearing at uh, the evening meeting in December uh, for the comprehensive plan that uh, is in its final draft format. Uh, unfortunately, due to the weather we had here and up in Kentucky, uh, which was worse than what we had here at that time, uh, our consultant, our, our lead consultant on that wasn't able, unable to make the meeting, so we postponed the uh, hearing on the comprehensive plan. Uh, that has been rescheduled. Uh, I believe there was a letter in your boxes, but I wanted to just to give you a friendly reminder that meeting will be on the 24th of this month. That's a Monday night. Uh, that, that meeting will be at 6 p.m. and it will be right here in this room. So uh, I'm hoping that we uh, see as many of you that uh, are able to make it to that meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. We have no report from the Health and Education Committee, no report from the Property Management Committee. Um, Public Safety Committee, we do have one resolution. Commissioner Farley. Hopefully this will be a little less controversy. All right, uh, Public Safety has for you tonight a resolution adopting the 2010 revision of the Rutherford County Hazardous Mitigation Plan. Whereas Rutherford County recognizes the threat that natural hazards pose to people and property. And whereas undertaking the hazard mitigation actions before disasters occur will reduce the potential for harm to people and property and save taxpayer dollars. And whereas an adopted hazard mitigation plan is required as a condition of future grant funding for mitigation projects. And whereas the Rutherford County hazard mitigation plan must be revised and approved on a scheduled period of every five years. And whereas Rutherford County participated jointly in the planning process with the other local units of government within the county to prepare the hazardous mitigation plan. And whereas in the letter dated December the 16th, 2010, that the Federal Emergency Management Agency has reviewed the revision of the Rutherford County Hazardous Mitigation Plan and determined that this re revision is compliant with federal standards in 44 CFR 201.6 B through D, subject to formal community adoption. Now therefore be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners hereby adopt the 2010 Rutherford County Hazardous Mitigation Plan as an official plan. And be it further resolved that the Rutherford County Emergency Management Agency will submit on behalf of the participating municipalities the adopted hazardous mitigation plan to the Federal Emergency Management Agency's officials through TEMA for final review and approval. Resolved this 13th day of January 2010 and I 2011, and I so move, Mr. Chairman. Second from Commissioner P, I believe, and others. Uh, all right, any other discussion here on this update to this plan? There being no other discussion, all of you in favor of this, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. There is no report from the steering committee. Mr. Chairman. Oh. If I may. And except they'd like to make an announcement, probably. If, if that's okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to remind everybody to, well, tell you one thing, uh, remind you of Tuesday night, uh, the 18th, next Tuesday at 530, will be the steering committee meeting in which our state delegation will be here to discuss any uh, anything, any happenings going on uh, on their end, as well as any questions, thoughts, or comments that you'd like to make to them as well. They can address those. Also, I'd also like to uh, let you all know, as well as the viewing public, that the uh, uh, anti-litter resolution that has been before us um, is posted on the website. Uh, Mr. Robertson has put that up there for us, as well as a comment uh, section on the website. So if you have any comments, if your constituents would like to uh, post anything there, they can always call or they can use that resource as well. Thank you, Mr. Robertson, for that. Thank you. And there is no report from the Public Works Committee. Is there any other business? Commissioner Farley. Wanted to stand up and I know uh, I had uh, put in everyone's box in a reminder um, and also to the public, this coming January the 20th, 
Uh, I know some of you all that used to be on property management uh, get the approval on this and thankful to the county mayor. Uh, Thursday the, the 20th at 11 o'clock, there's going to be a, a, uh, a monument dedication for the, the Rutherford County Fallen Firefighter Memorial. I want to invite everyone. Uh, there was an invitation sent and put in y'all's box. We had, we, for, uh, there was only three firefighters from Rutherford County that has, has lost their life in the line of duty. Two of those firefighters were with Murfreesboro Fire Department and one was with Amelville Volunteer Fire Department. But we're going to be doing a dedication Thursday at 11 o'clock and I'd like for all y'all to come out. May it, all right, thank you. 20th, 11 o'clock, here at the courthouse. Commissioner P. Just wanted to announce that there's going to be a country ham breakfast this weekend out at the Kittrell Volunteer Fire Department from 6 to 10. I'd like to invite everyone out. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to make any announcement or any other business? If there's no other business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>